1982, there essentially was no such thing as a significant side-scroller. That is, until Pitfall was released for the Atari 2600. In the game, you control a guy named Pitfall Harry, and explore over 200 screens in search of 32 treasures. There's four different kinds of treasures. There's gold, silver, bags of money, and diamond rings. You start out with 2,000 points, and the treasures you collect range between 2,000 and 500 each. You can lose points by either falling into a hole or being slowed down by rolling logs. So the objective is to collect all 32 treasures within 20 minutes, or before you lose all three lives, whichever comes first, and to keep as many points intact as possible, with the highest possible score being 114,000. Along the way, you'll run into many hazards. There's tar pits, water, fire, rattlesnakes, crocodiles, and scorpions. The scorpions reside underground, where you can run across through ladders on some streets. The underground route actually skips screens and is supposed to act as a shortcut, but you can't tell how far you've gone and whether or not you passed any treasures. So let's see what happens when I go down this route here. Of course, there's a scorpion waiting for me. And okay, another scorpion. Sometimes you have to pass a couple of them. And another scorpion. Jumping over them isn't something you can sleep through. You have to jump when you get real close to them. Damn, another scorpion. How many of them are there on this run? Another one? That's five. Do I venture to guess what's coming up next? Six! Come on, man, what's with this infestation of scorpions? Seven? There better be a kick-ass treasure waiting when I finally get past all this. Aw, oh, you have got to be fucking kidding me. I came all this way for a brick wall. So guess what that means? You have to go back and jump over all seven scorpions again, making it a grand total of 14 scorpions and nothing to show for it except a brick wall. Even without the dead ends, I still recommend simply sticking to the overland route. It may take you longer, but you won't be wondering whether or not you bypassed any treasures. Along this overland route, there's plenty of one-hit hazards of death. The rattlesnakes and campfires are stationary, simple to jump over. The top pits and water have a swinging vine you can grab onto to get across. Sometimes they'll magically disappear and then reappear, and during these instances, the swinging vine may or may not be there. If it isn't, you have to run across when the path is clear. And probably the biggest challenge are the crocodiles. A set of three will rest in the lake, simultaneously opening and closing their mouths. If there's no vine above them, you'll have to jump across them. You'll die if you land in the water or land in their open mouths. To get by them, you'll have to stand on their heads. It's the only safe zone. You can jump from head to head, but for safety's sake, you probably ought to just wait for the mouths to close. Another interesting thing about Pitfall is that you can choose two paths from the outset, by either heading left to right or right to left. Pitfall not only has crisp animation and fluid controls, but it's a lot of fun, too. Its ample amount of screens keeps things fresh, even if they're all really slight variations of each other. The game was groundbreaking during its time, making it one of the best-selling Atari 2600 games of all time. It had a pretty badass sequel that expanded upon this one called Pitfall 2 The Lost Caverns. Both of these versions are infinitely better than the garbage Super Pitfall on the NES. So if you can only play one Atari game in your entire lifetime, I suggest Pitfall. It still holds up well 26 years later.